Hello, my name is Rita Thompson. I'm, I'm from North Spirit Lake, Ontario. We are going to learn how to make moccasins today. Um, these are the stuff you're gonna need to make a moccasin. You're gonna, you're gonna need some supplies, um, like your leather, piece of leather, and some paper. It doesn't necessarily have to be this kind of paper, but I, I love using this paper. I like a crinkly sound. And then you're gonna need some canvas um, for your backing for the van. First of all, is, uh, you you need to finish your ramp is the first thing to do. And then you get, when you start making your ramp, you're gonna use your canvas piece. You cut it out, you cut the squares out, and your paper, and then your leather. And you sew it all around together. It'll look like this. But here it's not canvas. There's my my material, and then there's the paper, and then and then the the leather. You sew all around that, but it's gonna look like this in the beginning. So when that's done, but you need to use your patterns, your patterns for your you need patterns too for your vamp, your zazen. You you have to have your pattern so you know when you're done your beadwork you you get to cut it out like this it's going to look like this when it's all done the beadwork and then your wrap and you used your pattern to to make the design see here's the leather and the paper and the material and it's the finished beadwork part here so that's your wrap and then you're gonna need beads, a hunk of beads. There are different colors, different sizes of beads. And there's a green one. And some of them even come up in, in bags like this. These are beads too. You're gonna need beads and you're gonna need your thread. And you're gonna need your needles, needle and thread and the size, the print of your, the size of your moccasin. This is a size eight print of a moccasin. So you'll need all those. Those are very important to start your moccasin. You need a good pair of scissors. Oh yeah, the cutout. I have a cutout bottom of the moccasin. This is the, the cutout part that'll go with the moccasins and you'll you'll need lining too piling it's called you need to cut all this stuff out and just get everything ready i think the hardest the longest part is when you're doing your your beadwork it takes longer depends on what kind of design you want to make and stuff like that so yeah and you will put your You'll put your um, material here on on here, and then you will put your paper, and then your leather on top. Your paper will be in between the material and the leather. And then you'll have your thread and needle. It's gonna look like this. This is the part you're doing right, right now, the top part here of your moccasin. And this is how it, this is how it starts out. But if you had a design for your moccasin, your vamp, azazen, it's called azazen in our language. And if you had a design, you would put your design, sew it on top here. There we go. Just sew it all the way around. It doesn't have to be fancy. You're just tacking it down. You're just sewing it down so that it'll, it'll stay. This is what you end up with, with these three. Your material, your paper, and then your leather. And you just sew it together like this. Now you're ready to do your beadwork. 
I'm going to tie it with one needle uh, and then later on I will show you how to do it with two needles. They're going to be tacking down here. So for me I will, I will figure out where the middle is. I don't have uh, like measuring. I've ne I was never taught to measure things back in the day. Anyway, so here's a little tiny bead, and, and, and uh, so I just try to center it where where I think the center is, and then I'll just sew it down like this. And then four of these color green shiny beads, four, 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 four of these, and then four, four of this color. And these ones here are just in a in a bag. They're not. Um, oh, I'm gonna spill it. I'll put it there. There you go. One, two, three, four. So when you have them in a string like this, you had put one in the middle here. You don't necessarily have to if you don't want to. But I like putting this there as a, as a little marker as to where I'm going to go. Like where I'm going to be. So, so you got to make it straight. Make it straight. So you put it down and you make it straight. And then your needle. This is, you know, it, if you don't get it the first time, you know, it's you just have to keep, 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 keep doing it. Okay, I'm tacking down the, the the line that I first put the beads in and I'm doing it two at a time two beads at a time I'm going from one one side of the the, the line of the thread and I'm coming out on one side and then I will go on the other side of the bead but you have to make sure that you're you're not you have to make sure that you're tacking that, that you make sure you're tacking the, that bead down, see? So I'm gonna start on the other side of that design. So again, we use, we use four of these green colored beads and these light, lighter green, four, four of them. And this time, we don't use the blue bead. No blue bead. It's just uh, three, three. It's, don't put your bead too far out. You have to make sure it's like close to the, but not too close where it's gonna just See? I know I make it look so easy, but I've done it for years. Like I said, I've done this for many years. It takes a lot of uh, patience to to do this. You're going. You gotta make sure too, and your beads are lined up with your design. Or else your design is going, is going to be all crooked. I like making geometrical designs like stars and stuff like that. Star designs. Sometimes people will um, be happy with just a small little beadwork on their moccasin, or sometimes they want big elaborate. There. So here's my other my other needle. I'm gonna use two needles. So what you're doing, you're putting your needle in between the four beads. Putting it in between the the four beads and your your thread is like your thread is like this. And the two beads are over here and the other one's two is this on top, and then you're holding your, I hope you can see it. 
Okay, and you're just sewing this down. You're sewing the thread down. See? Now you're these two are, are sewn down. Now you push, you get you get uh, four more and then you again you do the same thing over again. You're just tacking it down. I always check the back to make sure it's not um it's not um tangled up in the back. And again, you pull it through. The reason why I like to use two needles is because I get more control of, of um, how my line of beads are going. I have more control other than just using one needle. See? Perfect. Oh, so this is what it's going to look like when you're halfway. And this is, ta-da, this is the finished one. This is what it's gonna look like when it's all done. This is the top part. The, the way you know which is your top part is um, the, how far it is from the top here. Like this is the bottom part. Okay, you take out your, your pattern. Just make sure that your your pattern is the same size as your vamp so that so that when you're you can't just put your vamp anywhere because you have to try and make it the exact same. Some people they draw around it like they they draw around it like this. And I'm gonna cut not on the inside or on the marking, I'm just gonna cut all around it. You have to make sure you have a sharp scissors. Okay. Yeah. This is the foot part of the moccasin and we're gonna learn how to put them together. So you have one, two, three, four, five pieces that you're gonna need and plus your leather needle to stitch these things together. The paper part of your inside of your, the ones you stitched together before earlier, um, I'm just gonna cut, cut around it, like just cut around it so that when I stitch it together, it's gonna be easier. The reason why you needed the paper in between is to make it, uh, to make it easier so it's not flopping around while you're doing your beadwork. That's the, the reason why you put the paper there. So after we cut that, then you uh, put this in half, like in half, like this. Then you, the front part, this is where you're gonna have to be really careful. The front part of your mocks in your vamp your azazen, you, after you um, put this in half, measured it in half, you put this one on the dot here and you hold it. You hold it in the middle there. And then, okay, I'm just going to put this thing here for now. And then, <clears throat> you, uh, you fold your, your leather in half again and again you guys have your dots on your on your pre-made pre-cut uh, mocks and so you put it in half and you I usually mark it with my fingernail where where my where I'm gonna put these together so you get your leather needle and you you can either go in from the top or from the bottom, whichever way is comfortable for you. 
and you just stitch this thing on. Just it's just tacking it so you so you know where you're gonna start from. We're doing the we're gonna be doing the the pleats. And sometimes too, when you're doing this thing, your your material is um will will seem like it's uh more bigger than your 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 leather, like what's happening right now. So what I usually do when that happens is I will cut a little bit off so that this this material that you sewed on is to help with the knots on your on your beadwork so it doesn't go right through. When that happens, I will just cut around a small on the edges just so that I can, you don't necessarily have to sew this part onto your, your leather. It's just to hold the, the thread. You'll end up with a piece like this. So it, it'll be easier to sew when you're doing your pleats. You're not worrying about the material. So this thing here, this piece, you you put it along the sides here. Then you hold it. You hold it. And then my mom said, told me that you use your thumb, your thumb to measure your the width of your your pleat where you're gonna bend the front part, the front part, the top part of your moccasin and you use your thumb and you're holding it here, holding it here together with that, that extra leather that you're gonna sew on there. After, you've, after you have used the, your measurement, your, your thumb as a measurement, you, you pull it, you hold it here, not, not hold it, but you leave it there like that and then you pull, you put this, the bottom part of your leather, your moccasin, you pull, you put it like this together, and yours will have dots that you can follow. So you got them all together now. Got them all together now, so you sew it where your dots are. Me, I don't have no dots, so I just know how much to. But I always use my measurement up, up on the top here for my, I always use my thumb. After the one you've already tacked together, you measure it using that, using that, the one, you use this thing, the one that you've um, tacked with, you use that, and then you fold, you fold your bottom piece of your moccasin together like this and the end of it has to be the same. Then you separate the vamp that the, you fold it in half. You separate it together and you, and you use, well yours has little dots on it, but mine is not. So I'm using the, the ones that I tacked together here. I'm using it as a guide so I know where I'm gonna put the other, the other. I just tried to do two. I tried one before, but it didn't, it doesn't work out. As you go along making your mocks and you experiment too, like what works for you. It's a learning process. See? See how it's uh, even. It's even, even when you put it in the middle, if, if you would go a little bit sideways, like, just an inch or whatever, it'll be just crooked like this and it'll be uneven. So you gotta make your measurements really good where your where your dots are. The the reason why you need to do these things to, together and not one at a time is because you use this one that you've already tacked where the where you, where the stitch is so you put it together like this. Whoop see? See, it's not even, it's not, one side is longer, so when that happens, I have to move, move this part this way a little bit more, so until it, until it adds, 
they come together. Here, this is sinew. It's wax thread. <clears throat> and this thing, I believe, breaks out in four or five, five strands. So I just pull it. And sometimes it'll get kind of tangly, so you have to keep uh, straightening it so it doesn't tangle up. I'm using the end of this other end on the same, uh, on the vamp. On the bottom of the vamp, I'm using the edge of it to measure where that tacking is. So I'll leave it there like that so that, so that when I fold this part, this other end of the moxen, I'll fold it here and make sure that it's even. And I'll hold it up again, and I'll, I'll make sure that it's really even. This is, this is where it's very important. You don't want your moxen to be lopsided, or else you'll have to redo it again. And you do the same way with your, with your, um, your lining, your piling. Mm -hmm. So you fold this thing, this thing half. Just the same way, same way as you did your. Uh, again, it's the same thing with your 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 lining, your piling. The okay, I fold this one, the inside, inside, uh, outside, to go on the inside of. As you can tell, even on your material of your piling, this is smoother. And this side is the uh, kind of like fluffy, fluffy, comfy little lining part. And you, you, you can tell the difference which side you're going to use. So, so you got to face them together, the fluffy parts on the inside, they go on the inside. It's harder when you use your, your um, leather needle to sew you, sew you. You're piling. And I like using my needle. And I like using the sinew even for my for my lining because I know it's gonna be it's gonna be strong and you have to pull tight too. So I will fold my I will fold the piling the vamp part like this. Like this so so they match up here on the bottom. And then I will fold it again, the whole, the bottom part of the, there, see, they're, they're perfect. So right here, I will separate it a little bit, the vamp and the other side of the piling, and I'll use that measurement to measure the, where I'm going to tack it again. See, there nice and even. I'm going to start the, the pleating on this one. You know, the end piece, here's one I was going to talk to you about. The end piece here, I like to try and push, make, I make it longer so that I can overlap it over here so that I can sew it down. It just helps so it doesn't come un unraveled like your knot. Because uh, when you're using this wax thread, it, sometimes it'll come undone easy, no matter how much. And some people do it different. Like they'll either burn the tip of that wax thread so it doesn't slide, the knot doesn't slide off. And for my my pleating, see here's a little pleat one. That's the first one. So I like to do two, two, two stitches, and then make another pleat. That's how I like to do mine. So that there's a space in between the, the pleats. I hope you guys can see this. 
I'm using a really big, um, a size 7 I think I'm using on that, uh, on that leather needle. There's different sizes and sometimes the small ones work better but I like using the big bigger needles because um, it's easier to hold and it's uh, again it's it's stronger and but it I think it makes bigger holes so I did two again I did two and then um, there's two pleats there now and there's two You know, you could make your pleats really big or you could make them really small. But as you go along, when you make your moccasins, if you keep making moccasins, you will know. You will begin to see which size pleats you will like. There's, if you like bigger ones, bigger ones, I, I've never tried big ones, but. Right there. Just cut it. And now, I want to see. I really want to see the other side. Okay, I'm just gonna push this thing inward and flip it inside out. And there. See? And then on this side, you're trimming that extra leather that you sewed on there. When you're making your um, your lining, this is uh, this is how it looks like. It's just the same same as when you're making. It's gonna look like exact same as as your your moccasin, but this is your lining of your moccasin. And um, the only difference with your lining is you don't have that extra piece of leather to sew onto your lining but it's done the same way and this is how it's going to look when you're when you're done with your lining so and the difference is you don't turn it inside out once you've done once you've done sewing it you just leave it the way it is because your fuzzy part is on on the inside where your feet is going to go in so that the fuzzy part is going to make your feet really comfortable and keep your feet warm and you tack it here not it doesn't have to be a big big tacking it's just to hold it so it doesn't come falling out when you put when you put your moccasin on and off just sew it in a little bit there. and then you're gonna there see So you put these two together in the back of it, like, see? You put them together like this, just to measure it and see how much um, piling is uh, more, more excess piling on the back of it, see? So you cut that off, but you make sure your piling is straight and your leather. So you use your leather as a guide where you're going to cut it off because it's too long your piling is my piling is too long so i'm going to cut it off like that so, yeah. so i'm going to sew the back part of the lining you can use a uh, the whip stitching, or you can just use the regular one. There. So you can figure it out how far you want to go down. Like I went about this far, and then I don't do, I don't go all the way. So I'll put, I will put this thing down like this, so that you make a little point like that. 
But you can always uh, tie a knot here if you want. I like to do that because I don't, like I said, I don't want my work to come unraveled. So you put the, you make a pointy thing, uh, pointy, make your fabric pointy like that, and then you put your thumb over here at the end of your stitching, and then you cut across, right across this way. So after you after you've done that you cut it clear across. And there you have your heel. So I'm just gonna keep this and again with this um, extra tail on the on the sinew I push it down like this way and sew it in. And I do the whip stitch again. I keep using the whip stitch. And I'll sew that little extra tail of that that thread, the sinew, and I just sew it down. That's that's just to make sure it it doesn't unravel. So this is your finished part of your back of your your moxin and see that's the inside part. Yeah, it's nice. You can't you can't see the stitching. So I'm just going to push this part inside just to get it out of the way because it's already stitched on the top here. So this part, the back part of your moccasin, you flip it inside out. I cut out a piece of um, leather and then I put it in between. In between the heel part of your moccasin. And then either way, either you're going this way or you're going down, you're going, you're pushing your needle this way or, or this way, it's up to you, whichever way is comfortable for you. Mine, I like to go down. Then I can see my, my thread there and I'll push the thread down here again. And then I'll do the whip stitch all the way down. Okay. And I just uh, use the tail of the, the, the sinew and I sew it down again so that they don't, it doesn't, it's harder to just come unraveled if it's, but, okay. If you're unsure about how far you're going to go down on your, how far you're going to sew, you pull out your uh, your piling again, your your lining. You pull it out and you measure it. You use your piling to measure it. See right there. Yep, right on the dot. So I'm going to tie my knot again. This is where you learn how to use your your material. This, I learned a lot of things from my mom because material was scarce back in the day and they have to use everything, every piece. And they never throw away our, our pieces of material because you might need it again. So do the extra things. This part here, see? You have that extra leather that we had put in there. Then I will cut, I will cut this little piece at the tip end of it. And I will, I'm gonna trim it. what it looks like now. So I'm gonna flip it back in inside and then I'm gonna put the piling down 
on there and then I'm going to measure, use that to measure my, where I'm going to cut. It has to, has to be perfect size. So here, up to here where I sewed, I'm going to cut that. You don't worry about that, the, the extra leather there. So you, you got to make sure you cut straight. And if you don't cut straight, and then your, your, your heel is not going to... So this piece that came off, this thing came off from here. And that's what I'm going to use to put it inside in here. I'm going to put this thing, I cut out, I cut it a little bit, just a little bit to just a little bit, just enough to, see? I make a, a little, it's not a triangle, what is, any, but I make a, I, what I cut out from the heel, I will put it inside, inside, and I will pull it out from here. Voila, just like a magician, okay? And there, see, you got your little piece there, the one that you just cut out. Everything you use, that's how you don't waste material. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the extra piece that's sticking out. I'm cutting it, and there, I had just finished cutting it. So now I have this extra piece in, in the heel part and I'm going to sew it down. I made sure I made a knot on my... You got to hold it. You can't let it go or else it will have to re... Okay, and you cut it off. Okay, and here... You grab your your piling. You take. You pull it out. Sew it on here. Just so that when you're again when you're pulling your, it's not always going to be the same size as your. But but you make sure that the middle part is is in line. See, this middle part is in line with this one here. That's that's what matters. So all you do is you tack down the end part. If you want, you can go all the way across if you want. I like to go across. Then I know that my moccasin is going to stay in place, like the lining part is going to stay in place. So now you just flip it inside out like this and you have your moccasin. And then the people always, I have gotten so many things that my mom taught me that the words of the stuff that they use, I guess uh, they say call it the rudder of your moccasin. <laughs> yeah. When you're using your knife, you do not press hard. You don't press your knife down into your 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 fur because when you cut, when you push it down, you're gonna look. It's gonna look like you you're giving it a. A haircut and it'll on the other side when it comes out it's not going to be nice like this it's going to look like you you just made a mo style haircut <laughs> uh, anyway but draw a straight line where you're going to cut your your fur and uh, how wide you're going to cut your fur is another thing because if you make it too wide if you make it too wide, your fur is going to be like really big on your 
And if you make a too thin is another thing. It's got to make sure you're cutting it properly. I just want to show you guys what happens when you just press it too hard and you cut the fur. Okay, I'm pushing down hard and I'm probably cutting the fur too, see? See? This now it now there's lots of fur everywhere. See? Now fur going everywhere. This is why you don't want to press down on your on your fur. This this hide is so thick. So I'm just, I'm not pressing really hard, but I'm still cutting. I'm only cutting the hide. There, there's one strip of fur. See? Here is where I didn't, this is where I didn't want to cut the fur on this side so that It'll have a nice, um, a nice uh, fringe on it, nice fur fringe. Okay, first of all, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go around the moccasin with my fur, just to, just to see how long my fur is gonna be. You're gonna see. So, for me, I will make an extra, a little bit extra. A little bit extra is always better than not extra. I always remember that. Always extra for when you measure around because uh, at the end when you're when you're done, you want to have enough more than enough for two. And then you could just when you're done with that, you can just cut it off. If you have extra fur, I'm just going to flip it around because I don't trust the, the sharp. So when you're putting this fur on, the fur is going down this way. When you flip it over, I'm just going to demonstrate it. When you flip it over, but it's going to be nicer once once it's sewed on. See, your fur is going this way. If you if you flip it the other way, okay. If you flip it this way, the hair is going up, not down. But that's uh, important too. Some people like to start in the back of their heel too when they're starting their, their but I like to start on the side me. Is it, I don't know, I just love starting on the side. On my first down, so, and then you're doing the whip stitch all the way around your moccasin. You make sure your piling is stitched on. This is where, okay, you're you're, do, you're stitching on three things, your fur, your piling, and your leather. You see that? Your, your fur, your piling, and your leather. All the way around. And here in the front, you gotta make sure that you're piling, you're sewing your piling on. You have to pull it a little bit too, to make sure that you're tacking it on or else it's not gonna. So I'm gonna put I'm gonna put one more last stitch on the fur in the piling. Can't see my piling. But the fur, it's hard when you're trying to sew in your fur. Where is it? There. Now cut it. Voila! That's the only. So, see, here's what it looks like when you've sewed on your fur. Even looks nice just to leave it like that. <laughs> no. Okay. And then you, then you see. There. That's how it's gonna look when you when you're done. Then the hard part uh, is uh, tacking down your your fur, your your beaver pelt down so you pull your fur down a little bit a little bit and then you have to you have to um, try to see there's the edge of the fur so you're gonna 
put your needle through the fur on the bottom part. That's the bottom part of your, your fur. There. So I'm just I left the tail again so that so that I don't. I'm gonna see if I can. Okay, this is where it's gonna get really. Okay, after you put your needle through the fur and then you go into your leather piece, but you don't go all the way to your other side of your, you don't push your needle all the way to the other side of your um, lining, your your piling, your lining. You don't want to see your, your, you don't want to see your thread on the other side, on the inside of your moccasin. So you're just going on the edge. And you'll know when, when, when you've gone through the other side of your piling, your, your lining. So you just make a stitch. You're, all you're doing is you're, you're tacking your, again, you're tacking your, your fur down, your beaver pelt down, and then you just keep going like that all the way around. And this is the finished product of the moxin. This is how your moxin is gonna look when you're done. And uh, I thank my mom for giving me the opportunity. Her name was Martha Day, and I just wanna thank her. She's not with us anymore, but I just wanna thank her for taking the time to teach me to make a moccasin. Thank you, Miigetch. Mm -hmm.